The remainder of this chapter is going to focus on examples of bifurcations. Here's one that shows up in a biological context. Very famous example associated with what is called a genetic switch. Without going into any of the details about the biology, this is a continuous time system with two variables, x and y, related to oh, some sort of protein production, let's say. And this system has not one parameter, mu, but two parameters, a and b. The continuous time first order system is as follows. dx dt equals y minus a times x, dy dt equals minus b times y plus x squared over one plus x squared. You may recall this looks a little similar to a system that we looked at in 1D in the y variable. This is an expanded or augmented version of that model. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to look for the equilibria. So set both of these equal to zero. From the first equation, we see that there are equilibria where y equals a times x. And substituting that in for y into the second equation, we get that ab times x equals x squared over one plus x squared. So what do we have? x equals zero is certainly one solution to that with y being equal to zero as well. Or factoring out an x from that second equation, what we get is the possibility that a times b equals x over one plus x squared. Multiplying through by one plus x squared gives us the quadratic polynomial, abx squared minus x plus ab equals zero. That means it's time for the quadratic formula. So taking that quadratic polynomial, solving for x, we get x equals one plus or minus square root of one minus four a squared b squared all over two ab. Recalling from our system that y equals a times x, we get the value of y equals one plus or minus square root of one minus four a squared b squared all over two b. Now examining these equilibria carefully, we see that they exist only when the term under the square root is non-negative. That is when two times a times b is less than one. When that quantity two ab equals one, then the term under that square root goes to zero. This pair of equilibria merges together and collapses. Now together with the origin, what is happening is we're going from one equilibrium to three equilibria. As we cross this curve in the AB plane where A times B equals one half. So what kind of bifurcation are we seeing there? Well, going from one equilibrium to three equilibria, that's a hallmark of a pitchfork. But you have to be careful because this is not a pitchfork bifurcation. This is a saddle node bifurcation. Why is that? Oh, let's take a look at what happens to this pair of equilibria when they collide into each other. Are they colliding into each other at the origin? No. When the term under that square root vanishes, we get one over two AB for X and one over two B for Y. Both of these quantities are non-zero because A and B have to be positive parameters. Aha, so we really have a curve of saddle node bifurcations separate from where the origin is. And now what is left is to classify these equilibria. If we look at the right hand side, of the dynamical system, f of x and y equals y minus ax and minus by plus x squared over one plus x squared. Taking the derivative of that, what do we get? We get the two by two matrix with entries negative a and then the unpleasant one, two x over quantity one plus x squared squared, the second column being the partials with respect to y, that is one and negative b. This matrix has trace minus a minus b, because both those parameters are strictly positive, we have strictly negative trace. That means we're gonna be looking at what? Sinks, saddles? It all depends on the determinant, which is a times b minus two x over quantity one plus x squared squared. That's a little messy. Let's take a look at what is happening at the origin. 
That's no problem. We have an upper triangular derivative matrix. The eigenvalues are minus a minus b. This is a sink. Of course, the tricky one is what happens after the saddle node bifurcation when we have that pair of equilibria. Well, we're going to have to substitute in that big expression for x into this, and then, no, that's kind of a mess. But wait a minute. Aha, this is a saddle node bifurcation. That means we're going to have one of our equilibria being a saddle, the other one being either a sink or a source. And guess what? We know that the trace is negative. That means we have a saddle and a sink. Now, as to which one is which, well, that might not be so obvious, but it's at this point where we should do a little bit of simulation and see what is happening. And upon doing so, we see the birth of this saddle and sink, and then we say to ourselves, oh yes, of course, I should have predicted that. The saddle is going to be in between the two sinks that we have, the one at the origin, and then the other one that's a little bit further out in the x and y direction. Why? Because the unstable directions of that saddle are going to feed into the two sinks. Of course, that should have been clear. At this point, it's worth noting for those interested in the biological background on this, that this system models a switch that you can change those parameters and go from a state where you have one sink at the origin, no production, nothing is happening, to turning on another sink where you can say, oh, I'm going to change the parameters and boom, now we're going to move over to this stable equilibrium and hang out there until I decide to turn the machine off. And then I change the parameters and zoop, you go back down to the origin. That's one example of using parameters and bifurcations to control a system, to get it to do what you want.